artists on these projects who want to try and document it all and do a little interview, kind of get to know these artists that I'm working with, get their story. So that's what this is all about, hanging out, getting the real-time stuff going on. First of all, what's your name? Uh, Robert Graham Coke. Where are you from? South Georgia, Albany, Georgia. That's a long ways from here. Yes, sir, my life. Brought us out to Idaho for a job and uh, science, so we came across the country. So what's your Instagram name? How can people find you? Uh, it's Glasshopper1468. The Glasshopper was taken, so we added a couple digits. Are the digits uh, important in any way? Um, yeah, it's a, it, it's kind of a mind frame. Me and a buddy came up with a number one night. We uh, we crashed a party in Georgia, a private party, and uh, he used the number 1468, and it got us in for about two hours, and then we realized that the numbers for all the families were three digits. We had four digits, so they came hunting us, and we, fork, we 1468 it out of there. <laughs> So how did you get started in blowing glass? Um, well, I, I'm from Albany, Georgia, and there's two more from there. Little B, Justin Brinson, oh, yeah, yeah. and uh, Josh Kennedy, which is Kennerud. And Justin moved off when we were right after high school and started blowing glass. And, and uh, he came back about two years later and blew me a chillum, a little, a little one -y. And I, it fucked me up, man. It, it, it ruined me. I had to have a torch. I had to have, you know, I had to try it. So I bought a little national. And man, I was on a national for probably a year, you know, making little stuff. And I uh, made pendants, sold them, bought a Carlisle. And ever since then, met people, progressed, and just kept going with it. I ended up quitting my job, construction. I was a framer, trim carpenter for 12 years. Uh, I sold my truck, bought my first kiln, and never looked back. <laughs> we we framed down in South Georgia for, you know, like I said, 12 years, and and I hated it, man. I absolutely fucking hated it. I hated everything about it. I hated getting up in the morning. I hated going to work. I didn't want to learn it. I didn't want to progress. I didn't want to be walking in the air. So everything I learned was, was how to not do something like I learned how to be a better cut man because I didn't want to be in the air. You know, I learned how to pretty much dodge it, not not sink yourself into it. And uh, until I met glass, and then I, you know, I wanted to learn every freaking thing about glass. I, I, there's nothing I don't want to know in glass, so it kind of made sense to make the change. Scary as that is. <laughs> so how long have you been? Blowing glass. 14 years now. Uh, I'd say professionally about five years. So. Yeah, I've been blowing glass like uh, 17 years professionally, like 10 minutes or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess I say professionally, meaning tomorrow's dinner's coming off of it, you know. Right. Meeting people with it. Well, they say that's the. the the best job to have if you can feed yourself or take care of yourself based on what you make yourself with your own hands. They say that's the that's the key to it's living weird. right. You think? If you're not freaking paying bills and bettering your family, so it's weird. It's a weird. It's a weird conversation. Yeah, definitely. I I couldn't agree more. Well, what's the biggest difference you see now than when you started? You know, what's a few of the, the differences you see in the game, in yourself, in what you see around you? For me, like for me personally, in my own in my own work, it took me forever to quit thinking about what people wanted me to make and just make what the hell I wanted to make, you know, and 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 for me that's what made it make sense because when I was doing it for other people it never made sense. You know, I, I never wanted to do it. I was going to work still every day. It, it was construction again, but different. So, and, and like for me personally, just making what I want to make, and then it, and that working out as well, like that making sense, it, it, it's gratifying. You know, like even when it doesn't make sense, it's still kind of gratifying. Even if it doesn't, you know, pan out in the end, the journey was. I don't know. It's it's it's, it's 
it's one of them things where if you're doing something just to profit, it don't make sense. And if you're doing something out of your heart, you probably won't profit, <laughs> or you might not profit. You know, like right, right. so it, it, you walk in that line of all times. And then with the industry, like I'm kind of removed from knowing like what's going on out there. You know, I don't really. I don't consider myself having hype or anything that sells my work other than somebody being into what I'm doing or actually into me personally. Right, right. You know, I got friends that buy my glass and that's, that means a shitload to you, you know, like that's family buying your work and and then you got collectors too. So I don't, I don't know, I don't know how it is for everybody else. How, what do you think about it? Right. Uh, I couldn't, I agree. I'm a lot of the same way. Um, you get caught up in between what you want to make, what you think will sell, and oh my gosh, so many things, so many variables. All seems to come down to just trying to keep, just be happy about it, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, smiling at the end of the day. Right, regardless. Yeah. So are we going the right way, Ryan? biggest influence starting out when you blowing glass? Um, for me it's always been friends you know not so much people around you. Yeah looking out um, so really Kennedy, Josh Kennedy and uh, and everybody he looked up to uh -huh. you know like when when I went what I would call wanting to go full-time um, we both like he was teaching me Marini and so I was just practicing Marini for years and uh -huh. and you know, folks in there before, like I didn't even know so a lot of glass blowers even existed for a long time. Right on. So I had to start out the, a lot the same way. It's good, I think. Yeah. Because there's no, you started your. Yeah. Your ease. Exactly. Your friends yeah. are your inspiration. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. No. That's that's what makes it genuine, in my opinion. I completely agree. Any uh, close calls, uh, shop mishaps, any crazy. Lighter explosions, anything like that? In I've your... been safe. I had a hose explode one time. Propane? Uh, oxy. But it sounded like a freaking bomb. <laughs> I thought I was dead. But, yeah. <laughs> but now I've been, I've got some cuts and burns and, and just like anybody else, but nothing horrific. Nothing too no crazy. No tendons, no crazy shit. <laughs> <laughs> What's the most involved piece to date? What's the hardest piece so far? Oh man, they keep getting that. I guess it's not here yet. You know, they keep getting more intense and more involved. For me, you know, Marini's like a, I guess what you call, the way I view it is like a marathon. Like, I can't go in and bust out a piece in a day or even two days or e really even a week sometimes. Sure, you know? so, sure. So I'll be prepping up Millie for freaking months before I could even attach on to try to do a piece. So usually I like to, you know, I don't want to say my I can't carry my own work, but it's really cool getting with somebody that I look up to and, and passing my work over and letting it, I, I guess, get seen more or, or I don't know, let the, let all the work go a little further yeah, and yeah, me sure. build my own piece, which I'm next year going to be more into, uh -huh. Uh -huh. a lot more solo stuff. What's your favorite thing to do when you're not blowing glass? Hmm. It's always changed. I guess when I was younger, it was concerts, music, running around. 
Single life. Drinking, partying, friends, raising hell. All right. And now it's more sightseeing, God, let me get fishing in every now and then, you know. Finer just, things in life. Yeah, it's really slowed down. It's, I don't know, I ain't getting older. I'm 38 now, so a lot of things that used to turn me on don't, and a lot of things <laughs> that didn't turn me on do, so. <laughs> I think that comes with the I think it's growth, somewhere. growing. All right. So have you been out of the country yet for blown glass, or would you be into that? Uh, I hate planes. Um, so no, I, I really have no, no urge to <laughs> get on a plane to go any freaking way, or much less out of the country. But I have flown to Mexico twice and, you know, been taught to know a couple things. But it's it's just something I shy away from usually is the plane so yeah, I'm with you on that. I'm not comfortable in many ways on them so <laughs> <laughs> no, it I'm, limits me but yeah. I, I I get on them every now and then and man up because you got it because you got it <laughs> yeah 100 percent but if I didn't I wouldn't do it there's just if there's any other way around it I could not agree more I hope <laughs> they do the teleport thing here pretty quick yeah I'm, yeah, I'm down Plane I'll let you go first but I'm down that's true we'll have to get somebody <laughs> to go first for us um what's your favorite artist alive um right now honestly that's probably gonna be weird too for me because I I tend to I tend to follow my friends work you know like I know there's all these amazing artists out there but until I've connected with them Usually I don't connect with their work as much. Right, right. Like, I mean, I respect the hell out of their work. Sure, sure. But as far as following or getting inspired, it's more by the human than uh -huh. by their work. So as it's it weird. For, yeah, it's weird for me. But That's so good. I look up to a lot of people that that I've met in life that have taught me things both in glass and in, in life. Uh -huh. so. What about dead artists? Probably the same answer. <laughs> it's still friends, you know. Like, I, I, I come from like my glass career comes out of the cornfields of South Georgia, so I didn't get. We didn't have internet when we started, you know. So right. I didn't get inspired by people that are that are not here no more or sure, that, sure. that are not. So everything that was inspiring me was was that day. It wasn't. In the, I don't know. Sure, it's weird. Sure. Like I, I kind of fell into glass. You know, I kind of like just I, I I don't know when you're in a studio or when you're around a spot where somebody there's a whole community of glass blowers I think it's different than when you're by your freaking self mm -hmm. and you know no out no way to get out and so it was just me and a couple friends right on. at home and and um I, I just think that's where it all came from it, it 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 comes from like my work comes out of nature or like even my dogs you know, right, like right. It's, it's weird. I don't Your everyday really, life, kind of I don't get too much inspiration off of other work. Cause it's weird. I know, it's well, that's okay. That's okay. You want to run on your own. I get inspiration through technique. Sure. Through other work, like there's tons of technique that sure, inspire sure. me. I'm just like in awe of. But right. I don't know if that's the same inspiration of trying to go through a piece of a scene or like the piece me and you did. You right. know, like we had an idea. We had that whole idea all the way through and switched it up a couple. I don't know. It's weird because. Even though we had it written down, it wasn't in stone, you right, know, and it right. changed. I like that part of it, I think. And it was kind of like what we were talking about and changed. I don't know. It wasn't so much inspired at, by nature no more than kind of like out of our brains. A couple right, things right. changed that night, well, those four days. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> four days and... It was a week and a half of work and three days or something. <laughs> it was intense. You're talking about Autumn? Yeah. Yep. Um, I'd like to hear that backstory because the piece is so... Freaking awesome! We have some really good footage of it. It'd be cool, really cool to hear. Yeah, uh, it, it like I said, it kept changing. Like we had this this thought of this, you know, beautiful autumn lady, and then she morphed, and the idea morphed, and even the energy morphed into she was more angry, like more like people are shitting on the earth type feel to her. Like she was more of an ass kicker in the end than she was at the beginning. <laughs> yes, that is for sure. <laughs> and I think that. That was part of the growing, and for me with the millie, it was all the same. Like, it's always prep your leaves, cut your leaves, pull your leaves down, polish your, you know, it's all the same grunt work until I walk in the door. And right. It's like... You had a ton of work in before we even... Hundreds of hours, and that's the, that's the part that I don't think anybody understands in Marini and millie or, you know, anything. I think people look at it and think it's done quickly or done, I don't know, even in, like... A session or two but it's just not it's done over weeks and months and 
and tons of cold working hours that nobody ever sees or even care to see, or and you won't even let nobody see it. You know, right, not, right. Uh, it's not time for that. No, you're just you're so far from even letting anybody see what you've been working on. <laughs> so when anything fails or goes south on you, it's just like nobody ever knew you was even there working on it. Right, you. <laughs> right, right. They weren't there for all those. You didn't make it. It didn't make it out. You know, so it's weird. <laughs> Do you work with any other mediums, or have you ever? I uh, just wood. Carpenter, 12 years. You know, did a lot of construction with wood, mantles, and I guess the thing that did turn me on was trim. Oh, you right. know, smaller things in, in carpentry. A more yeah, a little more detail, kind of follow stuff. the line type stuff. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. But um, that's really it. I've, I've seen, you know, worked with a couple blacksmiths, collabing stuff like that but, mm -hmm. but I it's personally bad. hadn't jumped across too much because uh, I don't you know I don't have the skills to jump in too much but wood I guess you'd say right right but glass is my favorite medium for sure what well, I know you talked about uh being a carpenter any other odd jobs or something in your life I was a bartender I was freaking I did landscaping um farming Restaurants, oyster shucker, I did Crazy, it all, you know, right everything. On. Are you close to the ocean there where you're? Well, Savannah, I guess you'd say, but you know. How far is that? Probably about three and a half hours. Oh, four really? Hours. So that's pretty close. But here. there's seafood all up, and you know, you're close enough to be shucking some damn oysters. You're right, yeah, I don't think I ever have <laughs> shucked one for sure. But, I miss yeah. the South. I really do. I didn't think I would, but I, it's, I was born and raised there, so I mean, it's rooted in me. Right, from, from right. From food to. Totally, totally. Music, you know. Right, right. You still have family there? Oh, yeah. Everybody. Everybody's there. Dang. So, Did they ever come out? Just my grandma. She came out last year, hung out, and um, I got a baby girl on the way, so she got to go to the first doctor visit. And oh, all wow. That was awesome. So it was really big oh, for yeah. us, and uh, she, you know, she's really all I got left. Both my parents are dead, so my grandma's everything. Thing, so to let her experience yeah. that and come out and be oh. part of that. That's, that's nothing not real life shit. Yeah, ain't <laughs> nothing better than that, brother. Nothing better. We have uh, any filler stuff or any stuff we haven't touched on yet? Do you want to ask Joey any questions? Yeah, it might be fun. Turn the tables on him a little bit. <coughs> um, Now's your chance. Uh oh. I'd like to kind of know, like, like when I hit you up, like what. I guess like what in my work or me or in the situation that make you wanna. I guess say yes to it all instead of... Um, you know, for me, I'm a lot like you in the sense that I'm in it for the human connection at, at least as much or more than the glass work. So I'm never ever quick to say, no, nah, I'm not, you don't have this. Or, to anyone? To anyone. Yeah. Um, obviously, if they've only been in it in a few months and they're super green, then it's going to be tough to, you know, speak the same language in a sense. But... Um, no, I was into it. I was, I'm always so busy, I make myself so busy, I never have even time to answer shit somehow. But um, So it was weird for you and I at first. We did phone tag and stuff at first, but I'm um, so stoked that we got to work because oh, yeah. I gained a friend more than, you know, Autumn's awesome piece, but in the whole scope of things, she could fall on concrete, and I'm just happy for what I gained. So I that'd guess. be my side of it. Speaking of the felling on the concrete, you want to talk about the... Oh, yeah. What? what oh, yeah, that the leaf, leaf your prep. Piece, your prep, and tell us about that. Well, yeah. Was that like, getting ready for me, or just... No, that was for Andrew, and um, it's it's just like, even in Marini, you can do everything perfect, and it's still all go south. Like, the colors, the certain colors with other colors, certain mixes that you try to do to achieve a certain color, or certain... It's just... It's really a bunch of stuff that you got to learn to even attempt certain pieces. And for us, green, green is the it's the the color, it's the catalyst, the one that's going to ruin everything. So a lot of us have made our own greens. Bamie, Stephen, you know, he he he's huge inspiration to any millie maker, and he you know he's got these recipes that he does and and to make greens and and he taught them to me and you know other people has taught me other recipes his was always the best but it still fell like once you get so many 
kiln sessions down the road, four or five sessions, it'll fail on you. Or you put that green a couple layers deep, it'll fail on you and all. So that particular piece you was talking about, I got about 150 hours, you know, in one two one section. That's just insane amount of work. And um, and the green went out, like I was telling y'all earlier. How, how, it, did you, how'd you find out? Just walking out there and opening the kiln, but, but <laughs> I, I was real sketched out that morning, so I was scared to open the kiln, and, you know, like. <laughs> I'd open the kiln, peep in from the side, or open the kiln, turn around, go get coffee, pet the dog, do whatever you can do except look at the damn piece of glass in the kiln. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was it was shattered. It was heartbroken. And I was I was I went all the way back to you know ground zero with that particular prep. And man, the very next day, Northstar put out that cadmium green. You know, the answer to my problem anyway, and probably a lot of problems for a lot of people. And I don't know the powers that be. It kind of all made sense to it all again start over again and start laying you know I felt like we had the answer to the problem but I had got to put in 200 more hours to get there to find out so I'm about 150 hours in right now and so far, so just good starting so far so good everything's worked out real good and I got with like, that new green yeah all right I'm good so I got like probably I, I'm doing everything at once so all the first layers at once all the second layers at once all, all the third layers at once so just I'm to on, keep the yeah, kiln just, well just to trips down watch or? the glass know what's in there know how many sessions are on it right do it all the same so if something fails I know why you know and where, where and what temps and what how many hours all that shit you right, know so right. it's all written down at home and and so far I, I think it's the answer I think that crap's gonna work so uh -huh. it's, it's it's been a godsend <laughs> Huge thanks to North Star <laughs> for listening, for sure. Right. Because that's what we want. Yeah, I mean, well, there's just so many people out there that put, you know, we're not rich. We put in our our money into that product, and and for it to go out on us, it's just like, damn. Man. Yeah, before you even start, it yeah. makes you want to quit, you know, or quit that anyway. Like screw <laughs> that noise. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'm not do that. <laughs> and so, I don't know. I think it's all gonna work out in the end. Uh, and, you know, just keep pushing forward. Keep trying it. I'm with that. Did you have any other questions? I know you asked one. And you um, say one. I was wondering, like, so on the day you walk out of the kiln and find that section exploded, 150 hours for you, what do you do to get out of that funk? What do you do to get back on the torch? What do you work on that day? You know, do you, do you uh, even do fire? Do you even mess with the flame? I mean, um, I'm sure you already know all the answers because you've been through it as well. Um. You know, you get easier at breaking somehow. I mean, I've had a lot of pieces where it was done and I just didn't like it and stuff right in the the knockoff jug, you know. So you get better at failure, but whew, some of them big ones are just, <laughs> oh, got to take a walk and eventually you got to have a bad memory about it, really. I mean, you want to have a good memory to I find, know how to fix it, but yeah. bad memory so it don't keep you from wanting to turn that lighter on again. Yeah, because one bad day can turn into two. Oh, mm -hmm. and then some, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yep. Go right along with that. Yeah. For me, I just build something that I, you know, something that I've had in my brain that's fun as hell that ain't got nothing to do with nothing else but me. Right. You know, like one of them Recharge. Yeah, yep. something that's going to be goofy and fun today. Recharge the heart <laughs> and the spirit. It can knock you down. Holy shit. Yeah, and that's the thing with Marini is you got it all in there. You know, it's all together. There's no taking a head off. There's no taking an arm or a body or <laughs> it's just gone, you know. It's trash. So those failures are just you know, there's no saving anything. And the only thing you can do is learn the lesson. Yes, yeah, so I think right now I'm just now getting to where I wanna be in the pattern stuff and um I'm hoping next year I'm gonna push more through the sculpting of it all, like try to tie it all together. Just just for me, and as far as like builds that I've had of my own, I mean, I've done some pieces that I thought were epic at the time, but I look back and you know, you're just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just not the same looking back as it is as the day you did it. Because the day you did it, you accomplished something that you couldn't do yesterday. Oh, and right, and right. today you can do all that stuff that you did that day. So it's you're you're more looking to what you can't do tomorrow than what you did yesterday. I don't. It's for me anyway. Like I'm I always like trying to beat what I did 
not so much trying to beat you, trying to beat me. Of course, you know, yeah. and that's where I'm at. Like yesterday, I couldn't get this down, and let's try it today. Right, and I like so. that. I think that's a way to good solid. I mean, I, I feel like I've grown in it a lot. I've learned a lot, but that's just through failure and, right, and right. success. <laughs> like mostly both, failure. yeah, mostly failure. Yeah. Um, is there anything that you wish you knew? Seven years ago, six years ago, ten years ago, um, or is there something that you see Everything. new, young, uh, young budding artists? If you're just like, oh, if they would just get this one thing, they would be the little key. It's like the keystones. Like, oh, if I if I knew, I think your answer was just keep fucking doing it, man. Yeah. Without the failure, you can't fucking. And, and in progress. the end, I think I kind of said it earlier. And that for me was making what I wanted to make. Like going to the torch and like, today I want to make this instead of being like, what's he selling? What are they buying? What's right. this store want? Right. What's sold at age? What, who's doing what, you know? And and I'm telling you, when you're first starting out, it's about the only place your brain can be. Oh yeah. Yeah, you're just like, who's what, doing every, what? Yep. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? And, and eventually you'll get to a point where you won't care what someone else is doing. You'll want to you'll wanna attack something that you want to attack and it's for you and then it starts making sense. And that stuff might not sell. I'm not even gonna lie, it might not sell. And, but there's something at the end of the day when you do open that kiln up and you find that piece that you wanted to make and it is right and, and you did accomplish every little thing on it, it's a success and it feels, it's just your own little battle, your own little triumph, your own little freaking right. war, you know, and, and you're, and I don't know, it, it's weird because you, you did what you want to did, and now you got to try to sell it. You know, it's kind of like creating pieces and selling pieces are totally different. Oh. And I'm, I really only focus on creating them, and I'm suck at selling them. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's, it's one of those things. I think 90% of glass floors will tell you that like they don't like selling glass, and it's because I guess you're putting a price on what you think. Yeah, I'm sure. Your art I'm worth. Sure. That's a lot of yeah, it. It's weird. So you don't want to undercut yourself and and just go for the dollar and feed the family, but you don't want to be walking around not selling anything either. You yeah, know? I think and creating these pieces just aren't going to be on your shelf. So it's for me, it's a, a constant battle of doing what I want to do, finding success in my own field, and then handling every day family line. I know you uh, were wondering what the hell I was talking about when I wanted to bring you out into a cave, <laughs> but uh, it was mostly just to kind of get us out of the shop and out of our element and and show people what we're doing when we're not burning our fingers and eyes and all that. So I, gotcha. I well, appreciate I'm, you. I'm glad I got to see more of Idaho. <laughs> Even if it was <laughs> underground. <laughs> yeah. Right on. Well, until the next piece, right? Oh, yes, sir. I like it in her hand the most. It's cool in her head because it totally takes the pipe off, but in her hand it's just it's like, it brings all that color down to the does. left side. Yeah, that's and nice. I can't wait to repost that pic. It looks good in her hand. Yeah, I agree. It looks great in her head, but in the hand's awesome. That was a crazy last night. <laughs> yeah, I was in a hurry that day. Oh, I can't even. It was the hardest one yet having to hold it that long and in the bunts and the whole time. That was something else. Yeah, so I appreciate it. Oh yeah. Did I, I hope we do a few more. Oh we yeah, some most smaller definitely stuff. <laughs> Yeah. I'm super down. You know that. I think something like this Kai, like you know, yeah. with the with the lady's face, you know, yeah. with leaves Piece coming on her the, hair. Yeah, I think it'd be cool. Yeah, I'm into that. Basically, like the head again is all I need. And yeah. I can make a badass pendant. Alright. Uh -huh. I'll get you a head. Right. Well, fellas, I'm gonna get home before the wife goes too crazy. Always good to see you, my brother. Thanks for coming out and hanging. <laughs>